13 News. Well, today marks one year since the first COVID case was confirmed in Tennessee. A year later, thousands of people are dead, and we're now dealing with three mutant strains of that virus here in the Mid-South. Dr. Stephen Threlkeld, Baptist Hospital's infectious disease expert, joins us live. Uh, let me ask you this, doctor. You studied this disease even before it came to Tennessee. Are you surprised at how much it has impacted not only this state, but the nation? Yeah, I have to say, I don't think any of us realize quite the degree uh, of pain and destruction it would it would bring on us. I mean, obviously, once it started tearing through New York City and the East Coast, we began to get an inkling. But at the first, I, you know, there's no question. I think we uh, we didn't have an, as much respect and fear for this thing as it probably deserved. And, and today, you know, there's good news. We have the vaccinations, but also a third mutant strain has been found here, the Mexico variant. What do you know about this one? Well, really, th these are the sorts of things that we expect to ha have happen. I mean, all of these variants are nothing more than sort of copies of the virus that have sort of spelling errors. And, and in those errors, they sometimes make um, mutants and variants that can hurt us in different ways. The main ways are they can be more contagious, they can be more deadly, and or they can, uh, they can make our immune system harder to do its job. And those are the things that we're continuing to watch very carefully from a lot of fronts. And that's why we love that vaccinations are here. Monday, Tennessee opens up vaccinations to phase 1C. Now, that's about a million more people who will be eligible. How much will this help us in the fight against this virus? Um, absolutely huge. We've certainly vaccinated the elderly in the population. But when you look at the people with significant heart lung problems, with obesity, with diabetes, these are some of the largest risk factors for severe disease and death. You, you get this group vaccinated and you've really cut a path toward victory that's going to be just huge, I think. I like that. Cut a path toward victory. All right, let's talk about Mississippi. Earlier this week, uh, Mississippi relaxed basically all of the COVID restrictions, no mask mandate, all of that. The president said that was Neanderthal thinking. Could that adversely impact us here in West Tennessee? Well, I think one of the problems that we've had throughout this pandemic in so many ways is that we've kind of driven from one shoulder of the road to the other. It's been hard to kind of keep the car in the middle. So. Um, you know, I would love to see a more measured approach, particularly as this decrease that we've seen in cases has kind of come to a halt and stabilized out, even a little bit of an increase. So the next two, three weeks are going to be very critical, and we don't want to see just sort of unfettered replication of this virus generate more of these mutants that could then go back and impact plan A, and that is effective vaccination. So we'd love to see the numbers come down a little bit more before we completely take our foot off the gas, honestly. Well, I will say this. Mississippi seems to be doing a great job with vaccinations, and now they've open it up to people 50 years of age and over. That's got to be a good sign. Those are all huge. There's no question. And, and, and the fact that we're doing it here is going to be a going to be a big, big boon. We just have to make sure that we have the structure to do it. You, you know, you put tickets out for something, you got to have enough seats. And so hopefully we can uh, we can accommodate all of these new people that are going to be such an important factor in protecting the largest portion of the population from you, severe disease. You know, one thing we were talking about in the newsroom, uh, we had heard earlier in the week that the Johnson and Johnson vaccine would be here in Shelby County this week. Do you know if they're actually using it yet to vaccinate people? I haven't heard that the doses have actually started yet. They were rumored to be starting here the latter part of the week. And I think uh, it underscores the fact that there's some nice advantages. It's a one-time vaccine. Um, and so that will greatly decrease the stress on the system of accomplishing those vaccinations. And, and as I say, the, the best vaccine is the first one you can get. <laughs> You're absolutely right about that. Dr. Threlkeld, thank you so much for joining us on this Friday morning. Thanks, Val.